Alrighty, hello everybody. It's your boy Theory, and we're back with another video. Now today is going to be a bit, bit of an interesting one because I'm covering some, I'd say, lesser known news, but news that isn't particularly interesting. Now, Deepin 23 preview was recently released, and if you don't know what Deepin is, Deepin is pretty much just a Debian-based distro with its own fancy desktop environment. But what Deepin has here is a more interesting update. The introduction of Linglong. Now, Linglong is a new packaging format developed by the Deepin devs. And what it claims to do is, quote, solve various compatibility problems caused by complex dependencies of traditional package formats under Linux. And today, I'm going to show you what it does and why this isn't new and why it's never going to get off outside of Linglong. Now, uh, if we go to what I think is a blog post, it looks like one. We already uh, see some of the justification for why Linglong has been created. Uh, mainly, there are four reasons. Number one, high maintenance costs of traditional manage package man management systems. Second, compatibility issues, cross dependencies, circular dependencies, and how that adds complexity. Third, security needs and how they need to be improved, and then fourth, reliability. Now, to touch on all of these very briefly, the first point is that uh, RPM and DEBs are very universal formats, and that developers need to maintain and build packages separately. Ideally, if developers are smart, they aren't going to package their software for an independent distro, maybe something like Debian, RHEL, Arch, they're just going to build binaries and let the distro maintainers do the packaging because then they don't have to worry about maintaining packages because, well, that's hard to do. And plus you don't know the goals of the distro. The second point is that uh, there's a lot of cross dependencies, circular dependencies, things like that, and that systems can break with carelessness. Now, obviously, if you're working on a critical system, like, say, an enterprise data center or something that needs constant availability and breakages are going to be bad, obviously, you want to have smart people who know what they're doing managing the servers. And most of the popular package management formats, like DEB or RPM, already are really good at checking for dependency conflicts and making sure that dependencies work nice together. And especially for stable releases like Debian and RHEL, you're probably not gonna have many package breakages because they're designed to be a lot more hardened against that. The third point that they covered that this uh, format will improve is security. Now this one's 99% uh, bogus because if you want security on your system, you aren't gonna install what you don't need. And second, you're going to audit what you install. Now, I'm sure not every person in their spare time has time to look through source code and check, oh, this is good, this isn't. But my thought is if you're installing software where you're actively managing what permissions it can have, clearly you don't trust it and you should rather be running it in a VM rather than a container because a VM has a lot more protection security wise than a container. Sure, you can break through a VM, but it's a lot more difficult in terms of a software aspect. And the fourth is insufficient reliability. There's no redundancy or verification mechanism. Now, if uh, you are anywhere involved in more esoteric Linux distributions, then you will probably have heard of NixOS. And NixOS does all of that. It is reproducible. If you frick up an update, you can roll back. It's an awesome distribution. Personally, I really like using this as a data center or a network infrastructure OS for general purpose computing because you can set up environments that have specific 
specific versions of packages. They're isolated from each other, so you only need what you need. And of course, reproducible with package breakage prevention, and you can have package rollback. So that's really a problem of the distribution itself, not the packages. Now, if we go back here, uh, pretty much all they mention is how Flatpak, Snap, and those similar formats exist. And ironically enough, they do the exact same approach as all of those systems. Now, it's technically different. They layer the runtime, the dependencies, and the environment, but ultimately, you're still sandboxing everything. It's still the exact same thing. Now, what uh, Ling Long appears to have is some custom tooling around OS Tree. Now, if you don't know what OS Tree is, OS Tree is a package management system framework. I don't know really how to describe it in that sense. That is developed by the Fedora devs for Fedora Silverblue, which is a distribution with a read-only root. So the idea is, you know, you pack, you layer certain packages onto the OS tree and then you can get access. It's a bit more convoluted than I'd like to actually explain, but just know that that's more code that they rely on other developers for rather than in-house. So to actually kind of explore what is interesting about this package manager is they have uh, a CLI tool, LL-CLI. Now, first of all, this is kind of an awful name for a package manager. In my personal opinion, you have stuff like apt, yum, and DNF, which aren't really commonly used aliases like LL. For instance, they had to add the dash CLI because I've only seen, you know, a couple people who don't use LL as an LS alias. But what it seems to be is a uh, very flat pack like tool for installing applications. And, the co and really, all of what this tool really is, is to just provide certain applications, especially like uh, proprietary software. Uh, for instance, WeChat work, QQ Music, QQ Browser, Linux, QQ. So uh, if you don't know, these are all Chinese services that, um, Chinese apps that run on services. And yeah, they are uh, very suspicious and a big security risk. And that's why uh, these universal packaging formats are awesome for those very lazy AAA developers because they don't want to actually have to make portable or good code. They just want to ship it. But that is Ling Long. And so my thoughts on this actual tool, because Flatpak is already super big in this universal portable package space, I don't think Ling Long is going to catch on outside of Deepin. Deepin's already kind of a very niche distro. There's Ubuntu Deepin, which, you know, has the Deepin desktop environment and whatnot, but isn't actually Deepin. And I feel like Snap is more present on Ubuntu and Flatpak is kind of present everywhere because everyone uses it uh, that, you know, wants to have dumb packaging systems like these universal package management systems. Ling Long, like I said, probably isn't going to catch outside of Deepin just because Flatpak is so big and then Deepin's dev team is probably going to have some policy regarding external distros. Ultimately, it's probably going to become maybe esoteric to find outside of Deepin, but I feel like Deepin users might use this. But overall, I think this is more of a meme format, and I don't think a lot of people are really going to actually use it. I'd probably not use it, and I mean, to be honest, I wouldn't use Flatpak either. I'd just write a package build or just make my own package since it's easy enough with most distros. But really, 
I, I thought of this as more interesting because it's one of those things you don't see every day, but it's honestly a bit, you know, a bit fun to laugh at and a bit of a giggle and a bit of a good time to just see what's going on here because ultimately this is just another meme package format that really isn't going to become all that big. Could be wrong, but there's a 99% chance this will just become a deep end only thing because they plan on trying to make it distro portable, but with the mass adoption of Flatpak, I don't see how this is going to catch on when Flatpak really just allows most people to install like Discord or Spotify on their systems without having to deal with distro package managers and all that kind of stuff out of the box. So ultimately, Linglong is a meme packaging format and it most likely won't catch on. And those are kind of my thoughts. If you like the video, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe. And if you have comments or you know you want to respond to this video, leave a comment in the description below. I always love interacting with community members and those who enjoy my videos. But that is all for today. I will see you in the next video. Peace.